All right, so uh, just materials kind of discussion. Um, this is a Fernco fitting that I was talking about down there uh, on the four inch pipe. This is actually a two inch Fernco, but it's a two inch Fernco to a two inch bushing that then is fitted with an inch and a quarter uh, barbed to thread fitting. And then we put uh, polyethylene inch and a quarter on the outside. So that's the fitting I was talking about that we could put down at the outlet of the spring to be able to collect water and of course then you would have PE pipe that would go forever and ever wherever you need it to go. Um, one inch, this, this happens to be inch and a quarter, three quarter inch would probably even work in this emergency situation. I will say that uh, as far as standard goes, if we're gonna front flow gravity water permanently, we need to be looking at an inch and a quarter. Unfortunately though, inch and a quarter is not as easy to come by. You can go to your average lows and get one inch or three quarter and so in this emergency temporary sort of situation, I would think we could get away with using one inch or three quarter. Just know you may have some air locking issues. Shouldn't really be a problem as long as we have enough fall to bring it down. So I've got this all put together, but I'll show you the, the bushings, I guess. So this is the, the bushing that goes into the Fernco fitting and then the standard barb, thread to barb fitting that screws in there. And then we just screw the, or just push this with hose clamps into an inch and a quarter like so. Uh, and that gets us from whatever size our overflow is at the spring down to a manageable size in the inch and a quarter or inch or three quarter. Uh, we would use sort of the same fittings, although it would just be a barb to barb fitting on our collection, our peasant collection there in the stream. I just put a small piece of pipe in there so you guys could see the overflow and how we caught it so fast. Uh, but you could just use the full, full standard coil of pipe and go to your source. You wouldn't have to have a connection I typically do put a connection in there somewhere just so I can pull it out for clean out purposes if I need to, but we would just have a barb to barb fitting on that um, situation. If you're gonna do this, I mean, by all means, call one of us and we'll talk you through some things. But, <clears throat> so as we talk about these pipe and pipe fittings, um, I, I realize to some of you that's foreign, but what I'm gonna say is uh, don't be afraid to take a piece of the pipe that you have or, or what you have available and go to your local hardware store and put it together in the aisle way so that you know when you walk out of there, you're gonna walk out with all the parts that you need when you get back. I do this all the time. I'll go to my local hardware and stand around in the aisle way and just put pieces together. There's a million different ways to put these pipes together to make them work. There's cheap, there's expensive. You can stand around and figure out what system works for you or which one's the best. While we're here, we'll also look at the two different tank styles we have. Um, this is ICB, ICBM, I don't know, I hear them called many, many, many different names. This one had chemicals in it at one point. Uh, it's been washed out and been used for water for 10 or 15 years. Um, but this one holds 250 gallons. It's pretty standard, most of you see them. Unfortunately, you know, you could buy these a month ago for $75. Now you're going to pay $150 for them because everybody wants them. And then there's standard truck tanks and standard... Uh, big round dome tanks that you can buy uh, from local supply places, uh, but this is just the standard tank storage. Um, if it's low enough in elevation, we could run it into the into the this pipe down in the bottom, and the water will bubble up. Or we could run the pipe into the top into this hole. Either one, as long as there's enough elevation fall, it's going to work either way. Um, and then this is just your standard Rubbermaid um, tank. It holds a hundred gallon. We could run the water from our peasant level spring development or, or from our spring development that we're recapturing into one of these tanks if the livestock can get to it and drink. I said while I was down there we wouldn't want the cattle to go down into that stream and down over the bank but if we're in a place with our peasant level development or with a spring development we're just running it down the hill it's still a safe place for the livestock to get to we could run that into this stock tank and allow them to drink from it. Word of caution though there's no real good way to put an overflow in these. So the water is going to overflow. So the way to do that is make it so that the tank overflows over the back and the livestock can only access it from the front so that you don't get the mud and, and manure right here at the edge of the tank. The way I, the way I have done this in the past is run the water in, make sure the water flows over the back and just run a temporary fence across the top with a solar box on it to keep them from accessing the mud on the back side because cattle will, if they can, do it. So just two different kinds of tanks. I mean, we, we can do tanks in many, many, many different ways. Rubbermaid sells a 300 gallon 
Uh, if you've got cheap and you don't need much storage, even a 50 gallon may help. It may get you out of a jam if you need to, but just quick ways to be able to store water. And I guess while we're here, we'll talk a little bit about pumping. Um, and I need to do some more research on this, but they sell a millions of different kinds of pumps depending on your, your source. Uh, gasoline pumps that will pump 100 feet in elevation are readily available. Uh, they, they make what they call a bilge pump that goes onto a battery. Uh, it's made to pump out the water out of the hulls of boats, but it can be hooked onto the battery of your car or your side-by-side -side and be able to pump water out of these tanks and into some other catchment or on some other storage tank that you're going to haul or move around. There's a million different ways and, and, and even down to a bucket if you have to, bucket and out of a tank and into another tank to be able to move it. But at this point, if we're really in trouble for water, we really need livestock water, um, these are all good ways to kind of do it and be able to stay on the farm instead of having to go away and stand in line to get water somewhere to bring it back to our livestock. I, I say all the time when I'm speaking for Eastern Ohio Grazing Council and all the other grazing events that I speak at, so there's no other way to hate yourself more than to have to haul water. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And um, in, in this situation we find ourselves in, we have to, in some cases, haul some water. And that's just the way that it is. But we want to make that as easy as possible. We've got several neighbors that are hauling water almost eight hours a day. They're leaving the farm and standing in line for an hour and coming back to the farm. And, and the ways that we've shown you here today, uh, hopefully we could keep you on the farm and collecting water that is your own, not paying for it and not traveling up and down the road for it.